Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, yes, we will start uh, the today's uh, pre-match press conference with Bangladesh head coach Russell Domingo. If you have any questions, please raise your hand and we can start straight away. Okay. Hi, coach. Obviously, you must be delighted uh, to finally make it to the Super 12. But uh, what are the areas you really want to work on, uh, which you think you need to improve after the qualifying round? And at the same time, there have been a lot of talks uh, back in the country uh, where uh, BCB president has been uh, uh, has been giving his some sort of uh, suggestions towards the team. How do you guys see these things? Afternoon, everyone. Um... Uh, firstly, well, I think there's uh, always room for improvement in every department. Um, we know with the bat, we haven't quite clicked um, at 100% yet. We know there's a lot of improvement that can take place there at the start, in the middle, and at the death of our innings. So uh, we're looking for a general all-round improvement with, with, with the batting. Pretty happy with the way he's gone with the ball. Uh, we've been pretty good in the field. Um, obviously... Uh, we, we need to assess conditions tomorrow because we're playing under totally different conditions to what we played in, in Oman. So that's all going to be a big challenge for us. And then the second part of your question, I'm just here to focus on the cricket. Um, I, I can't be too concerned about what gets said outside of the team, um, about people's opinions, media, whatever. My focus is on my team and making sure my team's prepared well for tomorrow, mentally and physically. Um, and, and that's where my focus is at the moment. Masuk. Hi, coach. Hi, sir. Uh, uh, it's clear that uh, most of the players are very shocked at the moment by the criticisms from the different corners. Uh, so, how difficult it is for you to keep them away from all those stuffs? Look, when, when, when you're playing international cricket, particularly in a, in, in a country like Bangladesh where there's so much passion, when things don't go well, there's always going to be criticism. And that's part of, of international sport. Um, a big part of, of coaching and management the team is to make sure that they focus on what they can control. There's nothing we can do about what people are writing or what people are saying. All we can focus is on what we think about our performances, how we evaluate our performances, the areas we feel we need to improve on. So that for me is our main focus. Um, as soon as we start worrying about those type of things, it takes your focus away from what you really need to focus on and so we've spoken long and hard about where our focus needs to be and our focus is very much on our, on our cricket and how we prepare for tomorrow's game. Coach, what will be the expector of tomorrow's match against Sri Lanka? What will be there? What will be the expector of Bangladesh cricketers? X-factor? Yeah. Look, I think we've played against Sri Lanka but over the last couple of, of, of months and we've had some some good contests against them. I know it's a different format, but we played well against them in the 50 over series. We had a competitive test series against them. Um, difficult to say. Uh, difficult to pinpoint one or two players. I think we've got a, a well balanced side. We've got some seriously skillful bowlers. Um, we've got some dangerous batters. We obviously know we've got a world class all rounder in Shakib. Um, so difficult to pinpoint one or two things. Obviously, these type of conditions can suit us. Uh, Sharjah, I suppose, a little bit more similar to to what to, to the wickets in, in Dakar are like. Um, so hopefully that can assist us in tomorrow's game. Um, coach, yeah. Bangladesh is going to play uh, their Super 12 with non maximum non-Asian countries like uh, England, Australia, South Africa. And maximum and all matches Bangladesh is going to play, which match started at local time two, two o'clock. So, is it a good opportunity for Bangladesh uh, as Asia country here for Super 12 to qualify semi final or to go for that? I think the, the scheduling, the way it's worked out of the two o'clock start suits us big time. Um, it takes due out of the equation. I know a lot of other teams are very focused on the due with us playing all our games at two o'clock. That's not an equation for us. So, I think our, our spinners will come very much into the competition. So we, we're happy that it's actually worked out that way, that all our games start at 2 o'clock. Regarding the, the position we're playing against, we know in a World Cup, anybody can beat anybody, whether you're in this group or the other group. All those teams are quality teams. So uh, not, not, not to perturb by the group we're in, whether it was this group or the other group, both groups equally hard, equally tough. So um, I don't think that's any advantage or disadvantage for us. Uh, 
uh, uh, considering the stadium, it's pretty small uh, comparing to the other stadiums. So, uh, how do you guys assess this thing? And uh, uh, well, the spin department can also play a big role, or the you can bank on the fast bowlers. Look, historically, Shorja, now they've relayed the wicket, and the scores have come down considerably since the the new wicket's been laid. But tall bowlers who hit the wicket have always uh, seemed to be in the game. I know I came here with South Africa years ago, and I remember Mornay Morkel was very effective, the sort of hard length that he bowled where the ball skids through. So I think tall fast bowlers are in the game. It's been always an, always a, an opportunity here if you bowl pretty straight wicket to wicket. LBW bowls come into the game. So um, the shorter boundaries, it's the same for both sides. Doesn't we're not we're not known to be a, a power hitting side, so that could favor us a lot, being able to find the boundary a little bit easier. Um, so that could be an advantage for us. Of course, uh, there is no leg spinner or wrist spinner in our side, and we saw that uh, Hasaranga, the long gun leg spinner, he did a, he done a great job. Round. Also, he has a good. Play. But do you think that uh, if Biplo is there, then uh, it will be good for batsmen? Biplo's not here. I want to talk about Biplo. He's not here. I can't talk about players that are not here. But how about the Hasaranga? How the batsmen, you know, uh, t- tackle them? Or what would be the... Well, we've had, we've had Biplop here at the start of our campaign and we have been doing a little bit of work. We've played against Hasaranga quite a bit over the last couple of months. Um, so we've got an idea as to what he's capable of. I was uh, saying that the wicket uh, may be similar like Taka. So, is it going to be a spin heavy bowling attack tomorrow? Well, see, I haven't even looked at the wicket yet. I'm just going on what statistics are saying. Um, I've come straight here. So, we'll have a look at the wicket later then and make a decision on the team. If there are no more in house questions, we'll move to the Zoom. Uh, Isam, your question, please. Coach, uh, how do you prepare uh, Mahedi for each of his roles? Uh, especially, you know, when you consider him as a, you know, you, you said that he's a free player. So, uh, say when you when you think about him as a as in the top order, how does he prepare? And how has he reacted to these roles? Um, and and are, how pleased are you with his uh, with his bowling in the tournament so far? No, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of Mahedi. Um, I think the most important thing is his character. Um, he's always up to... Uh, fulfill any role in the team. Not always easy, batting up the order, down the order, um, but never complains, just gets on with it because he's very focused on what the team needs. With a ball, very versatile, can bowl in the middle, can bowl at the death, can bowl up front. So he's, a, he's definitely a, a three-in-one cricketer for us. Um, I think the, the big thing with his preparation is just that he's, he's, he's happy to be doing any particular role and he sees every single role that he gets given as a big challenge for him and he, he takes that on um, with 100%, so very, very happy with the way he's gone, gone about his campaign thus far. And additionally, uh, Russell, just wanted to ask you about uh, uh, Sohan. Uh, the way he's keeping wicket, doesn't, it doesn't look like he's batting, you know, whether he's scoring runs or not. His keeping seems unaffected. Uh, how's, how has that impressed you? And about Afif, um, are, we, are we just waiting for one big knock uh, coming up in the, in the, in the, in the Super Bowls? Yeah, look, I think Afif and, and Shawan are, are going to be seriously good players for Bangladesh in this format. Um, Shawan is a, a one really big hitter at the back end of the innings. Um, Afif, uh, he got 20 of 13 balls the other and played really well. And hopefully he can kick on in this particular phase of the campaign. But they are big players for us. Shawan's keeping has been magnificent. I think of the game against um, Oman, he probably saved us 10 to 12 runs behind the stumps. And that's often the difference in these these type of games. So I've been very pleased with, with both of those players' performances. The runs might not be massive at the moment, but what they provide in the team is of immense value. Ekush, your question, please. Uh, hi, Kush. I have just two questions. Uh, Sharjah wicket is different from other two, you know. We saw both spinner and pace are doing well in the surface. Look like it is easy to score runs in power play. After that, it's going very tough. Considering this uh, condition, what should be your game plan? Number one. Number two, Sri Lanka misty spinner Mahesh Tikshana, who played uh, ball really well in the first round. Maybe he's not available in duty injury. Is it a bit comfortable for your team? Thank you. Look, regarding the game strategy, I don't think I can give the game strategy to the media because that's that's for us to <laughs> keep in house. Uh, obviously, performance in the power play is important here. Yeah? It shows 
teams that score the most in the power play tend to tend to win more games than the other team. So I think the first six overs with Bat and with Paul are going to be very important tomorrow. Regarding the finger spinner, I know that he did pick up apparently a side strain, whether he's playing or not. Not it's not in our control. That's whoever is playing him or Dan and Jaya, that's up to Sri Lanka. Um but we've got to prepare as if both them are both them are playing tomorrow. So yeah, there's not not too much uh, focus on Sri Lanka's makeup of their team. We're very focused on our performance tomorrow. The last two questions. Bappi Dhaka Post. Coach, uh, we have been struggling with our opening pair since long time. Do you have any plan to change in this position? Been struggling with? Opening pair. Our For opening pair has... Have... Say that again. Our opening, uh, we have we have been struggling with our opening pair since long time. Do you have any plan to change in this position? No. The last question, Shihab. Coach, Sri Lanka played their last game in Sharjah and they just outplayed Netherlands with their bowling attacks. Bangladesh will play against them in Sharjah. Does this give Sri Lanka added advantage and will they be ahead of Bangladesh in this match. And considering the weekend of Sharjah, will Bangladesh go with more spinners? Uh, I said earlier that I haven't had a look at the wicket yet. Um, we'll, we'll announce our side later on this evening or, or probably tomorrow morning. Um, we know spin has played a role, but like I said earlier, some tall bowlers have also been effective here. Sri Lanka have played a few games here, yes. Um, whether that's an advantage or not, I'm not sure. Um, I don't think what's happened in the first round counts for much when it comes uh, to the main event now. I think all teams are played nought, one nought, so we're all starting a scratch from tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys.